Hello everyone. Welcome to First Online University, a global platform for all your education and growth related needs. In this lecture, we are going to continue with the chapter alcohols, phenols and ethers. And in this particular lecture, we will be discussing the nomenclature and structures of various functional groups. Before we begin, a piece of information for you. You can use the coupon codes Mission J or Mission NEET while you enroll at First Online University for Mission J or NEET. Let us start with nomenclature first. Now, although I said in the last lecture that we have discussed nomenclature at par when we were talking about the GOC, that is General Organic Chemistry, but here also I will introduce nomenclature in brief, but I would suggest you to practice questions by yourself. Now, when we have the structure, say CH3OH, the name is methyl alcohol because one of the hydrogens of methane have been removed and replaced with OH. So it's methyl alcohol. The common name that is given is that of the alkyl, that is methyl plus OH is alcohol, so methyl alcohol. And IUPAC name of it, so common name is methyl alcohol, IUPAC name is methanol. The root word meth because there is one carbon atom, in because it's sp3 hybridized alkane, plus all because it is alcohol. So methanol, methanol. Next is ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Next is propyl alcohol, that is n propyl alcohol or propanol, that is propane one all. Then we have, this is known as isopropyl alcohol or secondary propyl alcohol or the IUPAC name is propane 2 oil. Next we have is N-butyl alcohol. The IUPAC name would be given by butane 1 oil. We can also have OH being present at the second position in butane. So we call it as secondary butyl alcohol or sec butyl alcohol and the IUPAC name would be butane to all. Next structure is, this is when you have tertiary butyl alcohol and the IUPAC name would be 2-methyl propane to all. Next is, so you know, just pause the video the time I, the moment I give you the structure, pause the video there, think about the IUPAC name and common names are well known, okay? So it should be known to you. Even if you don't know the common name, that's perfectly fine. You should be able to predict the IUPAC name at least. So for this particular structure, we have the common name as isobutyl alcohol and the IUPAC name will be given by 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be 2-methylpropane-1-ol. Next we have is, this is going to be my primary uh, alcohol only and the common name is neopentyl alcohol. See, these common names are not like you can just leave them just because you know the IUPAC names. No, these common names are very important because sometimes in the question, the uh, structure will not be given to you. You will just be given the name neopentyl alcohol reacts with this to give the product options are given to you. So unless and until you know what the structure of the reactant is, how will you be able to tell what is the product? So you will have to leave the question just because you do not know what is neopentyl alcohol. So you should be very well aware of these common names as well. The IUPAC name for it would be, so we have the parent chain with three carbon atoms, so propane and two methyl groups at the second carbon atom, so two, two dimethyl propane, one all. Next is where you have this structure. So for such large structures, there are no common names. All you have to do is predict the IUPAC names of these compounds. So if you have to do, what you have to do is you will have to Choose the parent chain first of all, number it and then the positions where the substituents are present, name them in the alphabetical order. So it's going to be 2, 2, 4, trimethyl, pentane, 3, all. Next is this, so pretty simple. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon atoms. So it's going to be butane, 2, 3, di, all. Remember here in butane, in will have E in the end. 
because we are not writing all we are writing die all so it's like whenever you have these uh, die try uh, being present in the suffix there you do not have to remove the e from in or in like that next is this particular structure you will first identify the parent chain and the name would be 4-ethyl heptane 2-3-diol. Next question. So this is the structure. Pause the video here. Write the IUPAC name. Then match after resuming the video. So you will name by first identifying the parent chain. Then giving the substituents the lowest number possible. And then writing down the alphabetical order. ordered. Uh, IUPAC name so it's pentane 1 2 diol. So when I see the next structure, it is this the IUPAC name would be 4 chloro 2 3 dimethyl methyl pentane 1 ol. I hope you've got this name correct. Next is this particular structure. So identify the longest parent chain starting from this. So we have five carbon atoms in the parent chain. So it will be pentane. And if you carefully see the substituent is this substituent, this. This is basically isopropyl alcohol. This substituent is chloroethyl group. And this is OH. So how do you have to name it? The IUPAC name would be. So it's going to be 3 chloromethyl 2 1 methyl ethyl so you do not call it as isopropyl you call it as one methyl ethyl pentane one all see the moment the structure gets bigger the difficulty level of giving the name or the nomenclature to that structure increases but that does not mean that you will leave the question just because you cannot attempt it you just have to rule, use those five six rules of nomenclature that we have talked about in the nomenclature lecture and that those Few rules will help you answer any hell difficult question of nomenclature in this world. Okay. I assure you, if you practice nomenclature really, really well, any complex structure that comes in front of you, you'll be able to answer it. The only key is knowing first thing, knowing the rules. Second thing, practice. Practice, practice and practice. Nothing else can make you perfect in nomenclature. Next is this particular structure, again, you have to identify the longest parent chain first of all, then see the substituents present and simply name it. So it would be 2,5-dimethylhexane-1,3-diol. Next we have is this particular structure. So I'm giving you like a lot of practice on nomenclature already. So if we are spending time in the lecture section for uh, you know, giving practice to you for nomenclature, I expect that apart from this also, you will practice hundreds of questions in nomenclature. Please be very well versed with the nomenclature at least because you tend to get questions based, direct questions based on nomenclature. So for this, since there is a double bond present, so we will give preference to the double bond and start the numbering from this side. So it's going to be hex, one in, three all. And since we are using uh, a vowel in ol so we remove the vowel e from in okay so two vowels will not come together remember this fact next question i hope you will be able to answer it again following the rule by way where you will be giving preference to the double point the numbering will start from the left hand side and out of bromo and hydroxyl that is all you will give preference to bromo obviously so that is going to be like 3 bromo and ol will come in the end so 3 bromo hex 2 in 2 all next question is very simple so it's cyclohexane with two substituents so you will simply write down 3 bromo cyclohexane 1 all so what do we see here is to find out the number of possible isomers of alkyl. So this was all about nomenclature. Now we move on to the next step forward where we see that if a particular alkyl alcohol has been given to me, how do I find out that what are the number of isomers that are 
possible for that. For example, when we talked about propane oil, we had propane 1 oil and propane 2 oil. These are called isomers because they have the same chemical formula but different molecular formulae. So, what do we see here? So, they have the same molecular formula but different structures. These, this is the definition of isomerism or isomers that is they have the same molecular formula but different structures. So here if we want to predict as to the number of such isomers that are possible for any given alkyl alcohol, the formula for it is 2 raised to power n minus 2 and the number of possible isomers plus alkyl alcohol, uh, sorry number of possible isomers of alkyl alcohols plus ethers, it would be 2 raised to power n minus 1 minus 1. Possible isomers of ethers would be 2 raised to power n minus 1 minus 1 bracket minus 2 raised to power n minus 2. So it's like simply subtracting the first, uh, the second, yeah, the first equation from the second equation, you will get the answer for the third equation. And n here will simply be the number of carbon atoms. So remember these formulae because they are very 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 important in the exam. You cannot just draw different structures and predict the number of isomers because there are very high chances that you are going to make a mistake there and even if you are not making a mistake but you are still wasting a lot of time. So in order to save time you need to remember or memorize these formulae so that you can directly find out the answer and save your time there with accuracy. Okay. Now, let us see a few concept check questions. You have to give the IUPAC name of this particular compound, which is very simple. We have, we have already dealt with more difficult questions than these, okay? So, this should not be difficult for you. We will identify the parent chain and it turns out to be like 1, 2, 3. So, it's going to be propane. Second position has methyl and second position has OH. So, it is going to be 2-methyl propane to all. That is your option number. B is the right answer. Next question is, are you back name of this structure? Pause the video here, find out the parent chain, start the numbering from wherever you have to give the preference, find out how many substituents are there, how do you have to name them in the alphabetical order and then choose one of the correct answers. So we identify the parent chain having five carbon atoms, then there is a methyl substituent, there is uh, a Cl and another methyl. So you will name it as Starting from the OH side, so it is going to be 4 chloro 2 3 dimethyl pentane 1 all. That is option number C is the right answer. Next question is the IUPAC name of this. We have already dealt with this question in the practice session. So you should be able to answer it. The answer is 3 bromo cyclohexanol. Very simple. Next question is what are the possible isomers of alkyl uh, alcohols that can be given by what formula? So we have seen it is 2 raised to power n minus 2. That is option C is the right answer. So we are now done with the nomenclature. We will be discussing with the, the, about the structures of functional groups. Now the structure of methanol can be given as so you have two carbon atoms. Right and the bond distance between the two. Um, so it's like where you have uh, carbon and carbon that are carbon with OH, right? So, the various bond distances are 142 picometers and 96 picometers. I know it's very light and you might not be clearly able to see it, but uh, you can at least see the values, right? And the angle would be 108.9 degrees. When I talk about the structure of phenol, there we have this particular bond length in, uh, in you know reduced to 136 picometers and in case of dimethyl ether you have sp3 hybridized carbon 141 picometers is the bond length and the bond angle is 111.7 degrees so when we talk about the coh bond angle in alcohols that is slightly less as compared to the tetrahedral bond angle which is 109 degree 28 minutes why is it so is because of the repulsions that exist between the unpaired, uh, sorry, unshared electron pairs on oxygen atom. The carbon oxygen bond length is 136 picometers in phenol, which is slightly less uh, than what we have in methanol. It is due to the fact that there is 
because in case of phenol you know you know there is a benzene ring with conjugated double bond and there is an OH group and the lone pair of electrons on oxygen has a tendency to move towards the ring so there is a delocalization possible so you will have a partial double bond character between the uh, oxygen and the carbon of the benzene ring Secondly, this sp2 hybridized carbon is attached to OH group of phenol, so that is also responsible for reducing the bond length. Now, if I talk about the order of the bond angle, the bond angle is highest in case of ether, followed by phenol, and in alcohols, the bond angle is going to be the lowest. Now, this is because in case of ether, you have big two, you have two alkyl groups, which are big ones. Okay, so they are going to be far apart from each other because of steric hindrance and that is going to increase the bond angle because in case of alcohols and phenols two uh, like one valency of oxygen is going to be satisfied by us by a small atom that is hydrogen the other group is big but in case of ether both the groups are big and therefore the angle is going to be the biggest then we have already seen and compared alcohols and phenols. I will not go into details again. Next, if I talk of bond length, then in case of alcohols and or ethos, we have approximately the same bond length, which is greater as compared to phenol. Why phenol has a shorter bond length? Because of partial double bond character, because of sp2 hybridized carbon. We have again discussed that. So this is just what is uh, like a bit of summary of what we have seen in the few, last few slides. Next, we move on to the uses of methanol. Now, methanol is used as an industrial solvent for oils, fats, gums, etc. It is also used for dry cleaning and for preparation of perfumes. Then it is used as an antifreeze agent. It is also used to prepare chloromethane, dimethyl sulfate, formaldehyde, etc. Then we move on to the uses of ethanol. As a solvent, it is used for dyes, oils, perfumes, cosmetics, and drugs. There is nothing to explain in this. So I'll just quickly move through it. But you should be well aware of these uses also because a question might come. Although such easy questions do not come, but you should be well prepared with it. Then it is basically when we have a mixture of 10 to 20% alcohol with, sorry, ethanol with petrol, then it is used as a fuel in motors. Then it is also used as an alcoholic beverage. So in the very first lecture on alcohols, when we talked about alcohol, so that alcohol is basically ethanol. Then effective topical antiseptic is also used as an antiseptic and it is used to prepare chloroform, iodoform, acetic acid, etc. Note that the rectified spirit you know, you can be asked. Now, this is something you can be directly asked. What is rectified spirit? It is basically 95.6% ethanol, that is ethyl alcohol, plus 4.4% water. It's an azeotropic mixture. So, the par alcohol, the next, so what so what we have done is rectified spirit. Next, what we have is par alcohol. Par alcohol is basically 20% absolute alcohol plus 80% petrol. So what is absolute alcohol? Absolute alcohol is ethyl alcohol which contains not more than 1% water. That is 99% pure ethyl alcohol is absolute alcohol. Now let us towards the end of the lecture have a look at a few concept check questions to see what you've understood in this entire lecture. The first question is alcohols have high boiling points than that of corresponding alkenes because metallic bonding Inter, intramolecular hydrogen bonding, intermolecular hydrogen bonding, none of these. Now, even if you don't know whether intra or inter exists, which I expect you to know, please at least know the fact that boiling point has nothing to do with intramolecular. It is always to do with intermolecular because the bonding that is going to exist between the molecules is what needs to be broken in order to make the molecule go into the vapor phase. So it is because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Next question is, following is used as an antifreeze agent. We have already seen we uh, while we were discussing the uses of methyl and ethyl alcohol. The right answer is ethanol. Following is used as an alcoholic beverage. This I think even if you are not given the options, you will be able to answer it. Option B is the right answer. That is ethanol. Next question is 95.6% ethyl alcohol and 4.4% water. So this is an important question that can come as it is in your exam. 
is known as bar alcohol, rectified spirit, absolute alcohol, or none of these. We have seen it is called rectified spirit. Next is the more the CO bond length of CO is observed in, I mean, CO bond length more is observed in. We have also talked about the order, and we see that alcohols have got the maximum bond length, followed by phenols, followed by ethers. Then bond length of CO in phenol is slightly less than that of CO of methanol because partial double bond character, yes. Sp2 carbon attached to the OH group of phenol, that is also correct. Both A and B or none of these. So option C is the... Okay, 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 okay. sorry. So it was just being asked about the bond length. Although yes, Sp2 hybridized carbon is attached to OH of phenol, that's correct. But we are being asked the reason to the given part in question, which says that the bond length is slightly less. The bond length can be explained by only the partial level one character. This B is correct with respect to phenols, but that is not the answer to the question. So the mistake that I have made here, I expect you to not make that mistake. Okay. So this is all about the nomenclature and structures of alcohols. I would suggest you to practice based on this lecture, you should practice lots and lots of questions, as many as possible. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for joining YouTube live classes for best NEET or JE coaching. You can also download the first online university mobile app through Google Play Store or App Store for continuous learning through your smartphones. Keep learning with first online university a team of millions of learners and educators worldwide.